despite my repeated attempts on this channel to demystify and educate people on the way that Mike Austin was releasing the club head through impact, I keep getting a lot of emails and I get a lot of comments on my videos saying that, you know, Steve, you're doing it wrong. You're doing this when you're supposed to be doing this and you're not supposed to be doing this. So, hey, right after this, we're gonna uh, revisit the Mike Austin hand action, maybe try to clear up a little bit um, how he was doing things when he hit his 515 yard drive and all of that's coming up right after this. Hey, this is Steve with HitItLonger.com. As you know, I'm on a journey to hit it not only longer and straighter off the tee, but here I've got a nine iron in my hand. I'm also on a journey to hit this thing close to the flag more often because getting short birdie putts is really fun. Hey, if you agree and you'd like to get a few more fairways and a few more birdie putts this year, by all means, join us at the subscribe button, like this video at the end if you liked it, and leave a comment down below, especially if you have any questions. All right, so back to a concept in the Mike Austin hand action that I call flap and roll over. So really easy one to remember. Um, you gotta keep in mind here that, you know, I'm not just somebody who watched a couple of Dan Shogger videos or watched a couple of Mike Dunaway videos and I'm just making all of this up and trying to copy it. I worked directly with Mike. Mike showed me exactly the way he did everything when he hit his long drives. Anything that might have been created or made up when Mike was in his 90s that was nursed along by D Dan Shogger to me is not a valid way of hitting a golf ball. Good luck to you if you want to hit it like that and you think you're going to hit it longer and straighter. You're not, but I wish you well. All right, let's take a look at the concept of flap and roll. So flap and roll especially pertains to the action of the right wrist, right forearm. And let's take a look at it from a couple different angles. But first we'll start with the just kind of a slow-mo look at it like this. So I'd, I'd love to be here in the slot. Now the flap of the wrist, of course, you'd think, well, that's poisonous. If you don't anything, know anything about the Mike Austin swing, you'd say, well, you can't do this. That's a, that's a flip. That's a cast. You're going to be cuppy and you're going to hit the ball fat all the time and not compress it at all. That's the big buzzword nowadays is compressing the golf ball. But that's not true because where in the swing I'm doing it. So for those of you who aren't up on uh, the Mike Austin technique, just start with this concept that make sure that uh, you're putting your speed out in front, not by trying to pull the arms or hold the hands, but instead by pivoting and turning the body out in front so that the flapping of the wrists will happen after impact. So with that in mind, let's look at this in slow-mo again. I want to go from this angle here and I'm already over into the left post. Now from here, if we just look at this, see from here, I don't have to do anything with my forearm as far as rotating it to square the club face. I just need a pure flap from here. So let's just look at that. So I arrive, there's my forward leaning shaft. So I've got the divot in front, I've got the compression, but I am in the midst of this pure flapping maneuver looking like that, which is advancing the club around the arc without rotating it overly so. So the club face ends up going really square around the arc. Watch this, just like that. And that takes us to about 30 inches past the ball where the greatest amount of speed would be, would be if there's no collision with the golf ball. So we're putting our max speed out in front of the ball between two and three feet. And that contains the flap. And see, of course, with the left arm, yeah, I've had to turn it to square it back up. I borrowed 90 degrees turning it on the backswing. I've got to repay that loan with the left forearm. But the right forearm never twists like that. The wrist just goes into uh, extension. We shift and turn through and we flap it into flexion like this. And that makes the club face, club face behave very gently through the impact zone. Now what I get accused of often, they say, well, Steve, you can't roll your arms like that. You'll, have, you'll hook the ball, you have to hook the ball. Uh, nobody, you know, you can't, you have to, it's timing dependent. You've got to practice all the time to time that club face flip. Look, I just showed you how my club face comes through the ball. It comes through 
square to the arc because I'm flapping the club at that point. The forearm crossing over right over left is going to happen after the 30 inch pass mark. So let's now take it through further. Here we go, shift and turn. Arrive with forward lean. I'm flapping already. So I'm flapping way back here, but the flap catches up here, gets to about here. And now what am I gonna do from here? Am I going to just go like this and just hold it off and end up finishing like this? No, the club head won't let us. The club head and the club shaft have so much momentum and we're so relaxed at this point that the club head is now dictating what the arms are doing. And that's gonna force us into this rolled over position by the time we get to here. So now the full right forearm has crossed over the left and the left is folding into its shadow just like that. Remember that happens beyond the impact zone. Cannot confuse that motion with a twisting of the forearms and wrists through impact, spinning the shaft about itself. I'm not advocating doing that and I don't think you should do that either. That would look like this, coming in like this and doing this. I am not advocating flipping the club face over rapidly through the impact zone. This is not the wrist motion that I'm using, nor do I teach. Again, the natural conclusion to this, because at this point, our hands are no longer trying to produce torque to uncock the shaft. They're, for the most part, freewheeling at this point in a relaxed state. And now the club head's momentum is taking it the rest of the way around the arc, which is trying to stay on this constant orbit around what some people call a swing plane. All right, let's go check it out from another angle. Um, coming up the line, I think you'll get a, a fresh perspective on what this action I'm advocating looks like. Okay, so again, here we are in the slot on our way to bottoming out about four inches in front of the ball. I'm already starting to exert the force way, way back here to go from extension into flexion. You just don't see it catch up on video until 30 inches past the ball where I'm intending to do it. So like this and catch impact forward lean. I bottom out in front of it. I'm in the midst of the flapping move here. Now see how that club face is responding. Watch how it comes in square to the arc square to the arc and advancing around square to the arc again. That's how I try to do it. I, that's how I advocate doing it. I do not advocate this wrist flipping, flipping the club face from open to shut. That would involve a lot of timing. Now let's look at the rollover. We've got a flap and a rollover of the right forearm. So here we go. Flap. The club reaches its longest point away from my sternum, 30 inches from the ball. At this point, I'm freewheeling. The club is now directing me. I'm not directing it anymore. I'm just allowing it to continue around the arc where you see, if I don't let the forearm cross over, I start doing this, pulling the club off its plane. I wouldn't be able to swing as fast. I wouldn't be able to hit the ball as accurately. But instead, let's look at the rollover. 30 inches past the ball, full flap. And now the forearm works its way over as the left forearm folds. The right arm is now maintaining the mean radius away from the sternum. The left arm folding the club going past the ear and over the shoulder like that. We are getting this motion overall. As I've shown you in other videos, this 180 degrees However, with the flap in the middle, it makes the club behave really nicely through the impact zone. All right, I'm gonna go back and keep working on this hand action going through the impact zone. Again, a golf swing is not a destination. It's simply a journey, it never ends. Quest to get better never ends if you are a true golf nut. <laughs> so. Thanks so much for watching. I'm Steve. I'm coming to you from Moore Park, California. And as always, hey, I'll either see you in the next video or I'll see you longer and straighter down the fairway. 
everybody take good care.